In the US, we see this increasing alignment between government and the large tech companies. In fact, they seem to be speaking with one voice. We saw at the inauguration, the front row, we had all the CEOs of the big tech companies. So how do you think this is going to play out uh, for the rest of the world and also in the US? At least in the US, it seems so currently in this current moment, in the current Trump administration, politicians can leverage in a way that it is good for their nation's technological acceleration and societal benefit. I think it is a good thing. There needs to be synergies, obviously. Well, I think I'm less uh, optimistic about how this is shaping up because I see the importance of having, uh, you know, companies flourish and you need to have companies that have sufficient size and reach, you know, uh, and capability because uh, that's how you achieve dominance in a particular space. But what worries me is that if you have even more concentration of power with the digital giants, these are not only very powerful companies, which are uh, almost monopolistic because they're so dominant in them in their markets, but also they are dominated by individuals. Um, these individuals have a lot of control over the decision making in these companies. And that is quite unprecedented. And that creates a lot of distortions in a market economy. Because in a market economy for it to thrive, you don't just need large companies. You need a lot of startups that are hungry and come up with innovation. But what might happen here is that the larger companies might stifle innovation to protect their monopoly power. I see what's happened in India as a possible alternative approach, and I'm referring to digital public infrastructure. So as you know, in India over the last 10 years, we've seen this India stack develop with the digital ID, and then we have you know EKYC and unified payments interface in financial services with all all the APIs were open source and interoperable. And this enabled what we call digital public infrastructure. So it's not in public ownership, but it's in public interest and it's public private partnership. But the outcome is that you have inclusion on the demand side because it's brought a lot of people from the informal economy into the formal economy. But it has also ensured a level playing field on the supply side. So you could have lots of startups, fintech startups entering and competing with the established banks and the digital giants. I think that's a much more healthy approach to go where you don't just have concentration of power in large companies.